Senator Cruz and so many others have talked about why this is a bad bill. Senator Moran called it an 800-page monstrosity, which again, I would agree with. I think the real story besides all of that is the fact that in the past Congress, Republicans leading the way in the Senate, Democrats having control in the House, were able to come together and pass $4 trillion worth of spending. In the Senate, we had very few dissenting votes, almost none. In the House also, very few dissenting votes. So far this year, we have a $1.9 trillion bill that not only did not attract a Republican vote, but it was nowhere close to it. I mean, nowhere close. You have to work to do that. Now we're faced with this 800-page bill that, again, not only do Republicans oppose it, they're nowhere close to coming to agreement. I talked to my uh, Secretary of State, John Thurston, Ask him about this bill. No one has approached him. Nobody that created this bothered to talk to any Secretary of State that I know of. He said that, and, and I would liken this to the chaos that we have on the border because of poor uh, administrative situations of guidance down there, to what he says, if we were to pass this tomorrow and put it in place, he felt like we would have chaos in our election system in 2022. So it's far-reaching. Again, we need to get ourselves in a situation where we're actually working on legislation and coming up with meaningful bills rather than these messaging things uh, to the far left. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, the, 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 the corrupt Politicians Act, Ted, that's great. The Corrupt Politicians Act, I like this. I want to start this morning by just talking about why most every American will dislike this bill. It uses taxpayer dollars to fund elections and campaigns. It uses taxpayer dollars to fund campaigns. That's going to result in more political attack ads. And when Americans find out they're going to have more political attack ads, their heads are going to explode. Next, I think what most every American thinks is not good in this bill is it dilutes your vote. It devalues your vote. I think about the sanctity of the election booth. When you walk in there and make your one vote, it counts as one vote, one person, one vote. Meanwhile, an operative is being paid for the last 30 to 60 days to go out and collect ballots, ballots that may have belonged to a dead person, to people that don't even live in the state yet. So when that person walks in with 30 ballots, 60 ballots, 100 ballots a day, it dilutes your value of your vote. What I'm for, I'm for election integrity. And I think in Kansas we have solid election integrity, and part of that is voter ID. And I think most every American thinks that voter ID adds to election integrity. I can't get a hotel room tonight, I can't rent a car tomorrow, I can't get in, in the halls of Congress without my ID, and I don't think it's too much to ask of a person to have an ID to vote. Not having an ID devalues your vote. As I think about this legislation, I think it's an unconstitutional power grab by Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer. It's an unconstitutional power grab. Look, just because you can grab power doesn't mean you have to. And actually one of the first tests of leadership is do you turn down power when you have opportunity to gain more? This legislation will end up with a one-party system. This is exactly what President Washington did not want, was a monarchy, a one-party system. And I believe Americans will remember this in 2022 and 2024. Thanks so much. Um, I want to join uh, all of my colleagues in stressing what the Democrats are trying to do with this legislation. They are trying to leverage a sliver of a majority in the House and an evenly divided Senate to lock in permanent and radical changes to the structure of our government. They want to change the rules of the Senate, change the traditions of the Senate to pass massively unpopular legislation that will help them never lose another election or that will help them pack our federal courts or pack our Senate. All these things are massively unpopular. You know, Americans have to show ID to get cough medicine at a pharmacy or get into a government building or get on an airplane. They believe they should have to show ID to vote. 
Things like same-day registration, again, radical ideas that would overturn almost every state's election law they want to foist upon our states. And they are doing this because they know the rest of their agenda is unpopular, trying to raise taxes and waste trillions of dollars of taxpayer money and to hold over the heads of Americans the loss of a job or loss of a spot in school or boycott of a business because they express opinions that are not consistent with progressive norms and fads and fashions. And I know there's a lot of talk about how the Senate is going to approach this legislation and will the Democrats have the votes to change the Senate rules, will they require a talking filibuster. I join all of my colleagues in saying there is no amount of time that I will not dedicate on the Senate floor to stopping the Democrats from passing this kind of radical legislation. So I just want to say I'm shoulder to shoulder with all my colleagues here. I hope that on many of these issues addressing the country's problems, we can find a bipartisan compromise approach, which is what Senate rules have always been designed to do and that the role the Senate has always played in our country. Thank you.